Today we're in the workshop where we've just finished converting an old sideboard into a really cool little kitchenette unit. Stick around and we'll show you how we did it. To begin with, we found a second-hand solid pine sideboard on TradeMe, which is a website kind of like eBay in the US. We also found a couple of sinks and a tap that were perfect for what we're trying to build. We started by installing the sinks. The first step was to work out the position. We did this by placing the sinks on the bench and using a tape measure to ensure we had equal spacing. Once we had them positioned correctly, we drew a pencil outline of the sinks. The sink lips are around 20mm, so we measured 20mm inside the line and then drew another line which would mark where we wanted to make the holes. Next, we used a jigsaw to cut out holes for the sinks, careful to follow the correct lines. As you go, it's always a good idea to check the hole to make sure that you've made it the correct size. With the holes cut, it was then time to secure the sinks in place. For this we use silicone, which glues them in but also creates a waterproof seal. Once the sinks were in, we placed heavy bags, in this case of concrete mix, into the sinks to hold them down and make sure they didn't move. This also helps to create a tight seal around the outer rim. Remember at this time to wipe away any extra silicone and then leave it to dry for about 12 hours. Next, it was time to install the kitchen mixer. We started by fitting the supplied connections and following the instructions by the manufacturer. We then measured and marked where we wanted the tap to be placed, and drilled a pilot hole as a guide. A larger drill bit appropriate to the size of the tap insert was selected, and we then drilled a larger hole for the tap. Using the supplied connections, the tap was then securely fastened to the bench. We then drilled a hole in the back of the sideboard for our plumbing to exit. The next step was to work out where we wanted the plumbing to exit the back of the sideboard, and then to drill the necessary holes for the pipes. Once this was all done, the kitchen waste was securely connected to the sinks and the pipes were left exiting the back of the kitchenette unit ready to be plumbed in in the future. With the sinks and taps in place, it was then time to put the drawers back. One of them would no longer fit in as a drawer, as the cavity was now occupied by the sink. For this one, we simply removed the face of the drawer and glued it back into place. The other sink still allowed room for a drawer to pass underneath, so this drawer was refitted. However, we first had to cut a section out of the drawer to allow room for the plumbing behind it. Next, we decided to fit a backsplash. There was a pile of old cedar weatherboards in the workshop that would be perfect for this. We sanded back one of the boards, cut it to size, and then attached it to the back of the kitchenette. At this point, we decided that the kitchenette could use a coat of polyurethane to protect the wood from moisture. Normally, this would have been done right at the beginning, but as there was already a kind of spray lacquer on the wood, we hadn't done it. Just for good measure, we added some wooden spice racks to the side of the kitchenette to finish it off. You could also attach fold-out wings to increase bench top space if you like. And there you have it, our finished kitchenette. In this case, we haven't added a stove, as we intend to use a portable one but it would be simple to include one in the design if you choose. A chopping board is designed to fit over one of the sinks, providing a bit more working space, and there's also a dish rack added. In the end, the material cost of this unit came in at around 500 New Zealand dollars, which is equal to about 350 US. If you're looking for a really simple kitchenette unit for a small space design and you don't have a huge budget, then this is an absolutely fantastic way of achieving a great result. I'm really chuffed with how this has turned out. 